132, I'd like to call to order. This is a special meeting of the City of Massillon's Financial Planning and Supervision Commission. Mr. Secretary, could you call the roll? Mayor Kevin Cazero Perry. Here. Tony Townsend. Here. Elaine Campbell. Here. Robert Gessner. Here. Robert Young. Here. Dan Risco. Here. Shannon Here. Here. Uh, the purpose of this meeting um, was special. It's a special meeting, so we will only be addressing one thing, and that is the it's a discussion and then a, either a, a, an approval or a rejection of the financial recovery plan. Laura distributed the plan. Before we go forward, though, um, I just wanted, and we'll go back to it, I printed out a copy of 118.06 of the revised code. And it basically is a criteria for approval um, and rejection. So we'll probably be going back to that during the course of the discussion. Or did you want to open up with um, discussing the plan? Sure. Um, in front of everybody on the desk, there's this familiar looking packet for the city of Massillon recovery plan and five year projections. I do want to note that this is updated from our previous meeting. Um, and the plan items on pages two and three are the plan that council approved at their last special meeting, you know, they did that by resolution. But that plan, as it was sent to Sharon that, that I got, had the income tax in it twice. Um, and then Sharon, there were some emails that went back and forth. So basically what I did through reading those emails is I tried to get what I thought council's intent was. Now, I could be wrong on that. Okay. Um, when there's, you know, two versions in there, you know, hopefully I got the right one. Um, and then as we go through, I'll, I'll point out some other areas where there's some information that I made some assumptions. Those could be right or wrong, and, and everybody can definitely let me know that. Um, but if we look at page three, number 12, that is that income tax increasing the rate by 0.2% for a total tax of 2%. Um, half of that, or 0.1%, would go to general fund. The other half for streets. And then if that was approved by voters to eliminate the tax credit reduction that's currently in place and um, repeal the street lighting fee that's currently in place. All the other plan items pretty much remain the same from what I had previously. At least that was my understanding. Um, going back through the forecast, the the top half or the above the line parts of the forecast pretty much remain the same. It's just the page nine for the most part that was updated. Um, when you get down to the bottom, you'll see the plan items again, like we discussed last meeting. There's those top section of recovery plan items, which I call our likely costs. Again, that's the vehicle replacement plan for both the street department and general, and that workers' compensation reserve that's needed. Those things would likely be a cost whether they were in the plan or not. Then you go down below, and we have the plan items. We have the income tax. Um, even though the income tax is being increased 0.2% in this plan, only 0.1% of it is on that line because that's the portion to general fund. Um, now here's where I've kind of made an assumption. I assume that if there is additional income tax for streets, that that tax could be used to offset the cost of the street department that's currently housed in the general fund. Because the way it works right now, 2015, is the city has a certain amount of street expenses. They pay as much of that expense as they can out of street restricted funds, special funds, but then anything over and above that has to be carried by the general fund. Um, you can see those costs on page eight. The second department on page eight, you can see street department. And that cost varies year to year. Um, 2014 is kind of a low year because street funds held more of those costs. 15 is higher, it's almost 350,000. We expect that to continue as those street funds, you know, have been somewhat depleted in past years. So what I have assumed is that if that tax is passed, that the way the ballot language will be written, it will be broad enough that these costs could be 
kind of taken care of by that tax. Um, so that's why I have taken out the 349.437 on page 9 in the, the future years. Now, if that ballot language is written more narrow, and it says that that street tax is only to be used for capital improvements, let's say, then this can't be here. Um, if you take a look at page 10, the very last line of numbers down at the bottom of page 10 is where I attempted to calculate I took the tasks that would be going to streets, I backed out the cost of the vehicle replacement, I backed out the cost of general fund street parking expenditures. There's the additional dollars that would be left, the increase for more street projects, more street repairs, that type of thing. Again, I've made a lot of assumptions here and, and I don't know how that'll come out depending on how ballot language might be written. So you're saying that these, these four numbers from 16 through 19 is sort of if everything is used to pay current expenses first this much would be left over to invest in new capital projects whether it's asphalt curbs and so forth correct if you paid all current expenses plus the vehicle replacement plan for streets okay. this is what is over and above that vehicle replacement and streets the, the street vehicle replacement okay. and our current street costs. Okay. This would be what would be the additional to go for new projects or new costs. So new asphalt, new concrete, new grates, sure. new light poles, new whatever. Could be, could be additional vehicles. Right. Could okay. be we have an even worse winter and we need more salt. I mean, you know, it could be any number of things. But that's what I calculated would be the extra, if you will. Okay, so that, that's kind of the first piece of the puzzle. Um, I also calculated on page 10, the row above that, I looked at if we have 0.1% additional income tax to general fund, but we're losing the tax credit reduction and we're losing the street lighting fee, what is the net? And that's the number there. So in 17 through 19, we net a negative 73,000 approximately. And that's based on current income tax, you know, looking at, at recent collections, you know, re recent wages, those types of things. Um, that's my best estimate at this point. So factoring all that in, going back to page nine, Bottom line, the general fund covers between seven hundred to nine hundred thousand each year, going out to the end of the forecast. Well, what happens on page ten, that very last line, um, if the ballot language becomes so specific that this is only for repair of streets <laughs> and uh, potholes and what? Seems to be the most mm -hmm. If that would be that restrictive, if you go to page nine, down at the bottom of page nine, the line that says street expenses to street funds, yes. and it's the 349,000, you would have to take that line out. Yeah. So that is, that's a different profile then? Correct. Those, those current expenses, those employee costs, you know, to maintain and repair streets, that are currently housed in general fund, you couldn't spend the money on that. That would have to stay in general fund. So that wouldn't be a savings to general anymore and that line would come out. So you can see, I mean, if you do the math. Thank you. And I guess also, not a question, I'm sorry, but to point out on page nine again, if you look at the balance, um, 2016, 17, 18, and 19, um, you'll see that even with the income tax increase in 2016, with the broadest interpretation of the, the money that goes to the street fund, um, 
you're looking at um, a decline in 2019, which would actually bring you lower in four years out from when it was first instituted in 2016. And I would assume that it's not going to get any higher than that, if anything, would likely decrease. It could. It could. Um, if you look at the top line under recovery plan items, that vehicle replacement plan mm -hmm. for street, yes. and then the next one for general, okay. those yes. lines vary widely. Okay. So, you know, and that depends on what the city wants to do and needs to do. You know, if more vehicles break down, that number increases. If they last longer than we think, that number decreases. So that that's kind of the biggest variable item, I think. Of the plan items, everything else is pretty flat. And like we talked about last time, again, above the line is the same. We still are assuming our same employees, no raises. Um, you know, the increase to health care was the only thing we we did on benefits. So, so this is definitely still status quo as far as that goes. So the stuff above the line, that doesn't include what was passed by council last night. And, and I'm just reading, I haven't seen the ordinance, I'm just looking at what was in the paper, that there was, um, it was passed something about minimum manning of 44. I got that for you today. minimum number of police officers at 44 people and there's what like 36 or something like that okay so that would be eight more people and that's not in your projections there right that is not our projections include the current police officers however it does include a significant amount of overtime because those officers are being used to staff you know multiple shifts um, if you have more officers you know, up to 44, let's say, you have less overtime, but you also have some training costs up front because they don't count towards um, and remaining their first several months. So <coughs> any of that is not factored in this forecast because this was done before that occurred. Do we have any idea what, what the net will be on that? Well, Maybe. Laura ran those numbers and worked with our chief of police and um, once she ran the numbers, she suggested that we not hire any additional because of the training cost, because it costs more money mm -hmm. up front, and it's not in the budget this year. And, um, but uh, one of the council members chose to bring it forward anyway. Um, the other piece that I did caution the council member is that negotiations are open, and so they really should not have proceeded with that vote because negotiations are open, um, but they did anyway. So but I just can't speak for them. Well, do you have a feel for what happens when you go from 36 to 44? Is it is it plus can a I small be? amount, plus a big amount? Um, we gotta figure Looking at those out years? And well, we did calculate that, and we calculated it all the way from one officer up to, I think, eight or nine was our max that we did, working with the police chief um, and some of his staff. What we found out was, um, it's, I believe, I'd have to look back at my numbers, but I believe it was about 8000 per person, per officer. Yeah. Of, yes, of cost. But we factored that on a full year. So if you hire somebody, let's say, in June, you don't have a full year to recoup your upfront costs because their first 12 to 14 weeks, they're a full cost, mm -hmm. you know. They don't start saving the city money until they get up to speed. At, I mean, so. But when we look out a couple of years, we're looking at sixty-five thousand dollars per year well, for those additional over, for that change in staffing. Over time, if you go out, I believe we hit it at about three years. They start saving the city money okay. because taking up those shifts that are right now time and a half, okay. even straight time plus benefits is cheaper than time and a half. Uh, but you have to get to that break-even point. 
and although that seems logical, like if you have a chance to break even two, three years down the road, you'd want to do it, mm -hmm. you have to have the money in the current year budget to cover yeah. those upfront yeah. costs to be able to bring the person on. So that's where the discussion was. If it was up to me, I would say you wouldn't want to hire anybody immediately until you can find room in the 2015 budget for that upfront cost, which hasn't happened to my knowledge. I also want to make the distinction here that it's minimum number, not minimum manning. Minimum manning is a term that's primarily used when we're talking about fire forces, and that has to do with how many people need to be there at the station houses or house um, during a 24-hour shift. So that's different. That's just saying there needs to be, the ordinance is saying there needs to be 44 on staff of which would still be a management decision, I would assume, so many of them would be on duty. Well, they still have minimum manning for on duty for police as well. <coughs> they do in their They contract? do. It's six for some shifts and seven for others. Okay. Um, but so that still stands, and that's where they're running into the overtime, because right now there's not a big enough pool of people to pull from, so you always have somebody that's having to work time and a half. Um, if you have a bigger pool, you do have more people to fill the shifts, you get more straight time, but again, you have those upfront training costs. You also have ongoing fringe benefit costs. Right. right. Kathy, and, and maybe it's not on the subject, but I'm assuming you didn't want that to come up during negotiation time because it's basically a negotiation? Well, that, that's going to be for our staffing. negotiating attorney, not for me. Um, she recommended that I talk with uh, Mr. Chauvin and share with him that negotiations are open and that really should go through negotiations. Um, but again, he went forward with the vote. So. Okay. The thinking that, you know, I'm guessing, the thinking it could be thought anyway, that if you've got money to hire more police officers, then you would certainly have money available to give all of the officers some sort of increase in wages or whatever they're looking for during the negotiations. Okay, so we kind of talked a little bit about it. We had some questions. Are there anything else? And it doesn't have to be questions, comments. Well, I'm, I'm concerned. I talked to Laura about this yesterday. Okay. I'm concerned about what will happen to the forecast for 2021, 2022, and so forth. When we, I mean, when we go out a couple of years, so mm -hmm. let's assume for a moment that it's now December 31st, 2016. Okay. November, November of 2015, we passed this tax ordinance picking up the $1.6 million, we're splitting it up, we've lost the lighting fee, we've lost the tax credit, but now it's the end of 2016. And Laura has to create a budget for 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. What's going to be on the income tax line in 2021 and 2022 for that 2%, 0.2% increase? Zero? Has to be renewed in five years. So. If it, I mean, can she assume it will pass, or must she assume it's zero until it does pass? I guess she would assume it would pass below the line, but not above the line. That's right. Because the above the line stuff is the stuff that we know of for sure is a certainty. Or given, you know, how many people are employed currently, assuming that they will all be employed in the future, and, and other assumptions as to increases. and. and in that respect, Laura has not put any increases at all in any of this for salaries for these five years. Okay, so, um, so in 2021, when the tax expires, above the line would drop by right. 1.68 million, and below the line would be a new $1.6 million income tax income from a levy that will be renewed or from a, a new tax. Okay, so it doesn't force it into uh, a negative situation. Correct. The 
it's just moving the money from above the line to below the line? The things that we know now are still present at that time. Okay. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm trying to isolate the, the income tax because the, the five-year <coughs> lifespan of it means right. something has to happen at the end of 2020, and it, it's either do we consider it zero after that going forward, or do we continue that it, that it will be renewed? I hadn't thought about shifting it from above to below. Well, and, and let's think about the shift, uh, because when you shift it from above to below, you've got to look at what, what the above looks like. Right. Be because negative. if it's, if it's going to be negative, or it's going to be substantially smaller. Yeah. What what it'll be, uh, I can't say for sure. But anything below the line, which we're looking at the double line, underline as being where, where we think we're going to be, all things being equal, we've also got to realize that below the line, those things might not be. Right. So, um, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, I think that brings into bearing, um, in particular, Right. happens after five years. Yeah, I mean, I looking at, at the submission of detailed financial plans, you know, balance the budget, avoid future deficits in any funds, and also avoid any fiscal emergency conditions in the future. Both of those are basically threatened to come into place, come into being in 2021. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. But we don't know for sure because, again, five years, if you talk to people, especially in schools, the first two, maybe three years, you know, okay, but four and five, too much uncertainty. In right. the <coughs> so even if everything did take place, there could be something that occurs above the line somewhere that we don't right. anticipate yeah. that will change these numbers below. Okay. Right. Well, I can I ask a question? Um, had you met at all with Consul as they prepared their proposals? I did not. And of course, the, the well, I'll ask, I think I can ask the mayor this question. Looking at, at the bottom of page 10, and the, the very last number, <coughs> Laura explained the net effect of 0.1% additional income tax and so forth. And this assumes we've taken the 0.1% of tax revenue, applied it to existing street expenses, and these are the amounts that are left over for investment in new infrastructure, correct? Whether it's right. capital purchases of vehicles, and hiring contractors to pave streets, and put in manholes, and all that sort of thing. And one of the things I think that's gonna be important, or it seems important, to pass the levy, or pass the income tax when it comes up for renewal, we discussed this last time, was making sure we paid the streets and we fixed the vehicles and so forth. And so, Kathy, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but 71,016 and 47,017, is that a significant number in terms of the street uh, repair projects? Yeah. Okay. Are 290 and 230? I'm going to say we have target streets that we're looking at to do right now. We have about two hundred and some thousand uh, dollars to utilize, and I think we have seven streets on that. So it gives you kind of some kind of an idea. Okay. Now it depends on if you have storm grates that you have to replace. I mean, other factors will go into that, <coughs> um, and it also depends on the depth, what kind of job you're going to be doing. Right. So it's not a lot of money to be able to utilize for the streets that are in our condition that they're in today. That's yeah, That's my concern, is if, if repairing the streets and, re and replacing the vehicles are key to renewing the income tax and keeping that revenue coming in, we're going to be off to a really slow start and have a couple of a couple more years, maybe three more years of really rough streets that can't that just can't be replaced. Fast enough. Well, and I also wanted to point out, Laura, we did not take this all the way out, but I believe in 2023, somewhere in there, we have a tower 
uh, truck for the fire department, and it's $870,000. Uh, and so uh, you have to save some of this money as you go forward, so you have that in order to purchase that uh, in years out. So uh, I don't know that, and I don't have that in front of me today, but I don't know that, that this amount would allow us to do that. You know, I, with the spending of this money on streets, are there any matching funds that come from mm -hmm. federal projects and that sort of thing that stretch them further? There are. But, but even so, this is not... Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Whether it's a state road or whatever. Okay. 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 But even, even with those matching funds and so forth, it's, it's not enough to make a huge impact in the street problems we have. That, that, for instance, the Hankins Road, we did get dollars for all of that. So yes, there are opportunities for that, right. but it's typically a project. And again, I just want to stress that the only reason I did this number was just to hammer home that point of we have to, not we, I'm not part of the decision making, but council and mayor have to decide up front what the ballot language will be. Because if your intent is to pay more streets, do more projects, you know, then you go with a more restrictive ballot language. If your intent is to pay for the street services you have now and then use the additional for new projects, then this is where you end up. So that, that's just a decision that has to be made. Tony, I'll ask you as, as, as sort of the council representative here, do you know what the intention is for the street funds? Was it to to cover current operating expenses of the street department, or was that 0.1% specifically designated for new projects? To my understanding, it was to cover uh, operations okay. uh, within the street departments, equipments, and things of that sort. And if I'm wrong, I don't think that would public speak, but but that was my uh, assumption that okay. was for that. I guess I would add to shift gears here, looking at the, the tax language, and I'm looking at the ordinance, or the resolution, I guess it was. Looking at the resolution, there are two tax plans, and my understanding is <clears throat> the first one in order here is the one that was intended. I, I, okay, let me keep going. Um, I'll, I'll say plan A, the first one, says street maintenance and general fund gets the money. And if it passes, the uh, street lighting fee is eliminated and it automatically repeals the income tax credit. But it doesn't say to what extent. Is it 100% of 1.8 or 100% of 2.0. In plan B on the second page, it is specific to 100% of 1.8. It makes a big difference. But if you also notice on that page, it's just, it doesn't say if this happens, then that. It just says it's gone. Which one? First plan A? Plan B. It just says it's gone. It says if the levy passes. It does? Okay. Yeah, it, does, it says if the levy passes. Okay. Um, the, the lighting fee would be repealed and the credit would be restored to 100% of the first 1.8. Okay. So plan B, but I mean, there's the problem. Plan B says half goes to vehicles. No. Plan B says the 0.2% goes to vehicles and streets. Nothing to the general fund. But it says the tax credit is 100% of 1.8. Plan A says the 50-50 split between the vehicles and streets getting half, general fund getting half, but it is not specific as far as the income tax credit being restored. It would be my position, Bob, that, um, that we, it's not our job to interpret what they passed, and if that, we have to take it in total, what's on the four corners of, you know, that page within the four corners um, and because of that um, I frankly uh, and, and not trying to sway anybody but I simply can't vote to approve this plan because I, I'm not sure what the plan is 
there's too many if ands or or you know there's too much interpretation and what we may interpret may be different than what's interpreted down the line and the plan even though we do at the very least we'll um, look for revision every year that plan should at least be good for a year what given other factors it's got to be some sort of document that lays the groundwork and the pathway. And there's no path. I mean, there's all these whys in the road. And I can't read that and say that I'm supposed to go down this way. You can read it and say we're supposed to go down that way. And to be honest with you, we're both right. Well, the, the reason I was going down that path, whether it's the X, the Y, or the Z, yes. um, is to to see if, if Tony knows the intention so we can verify Laura's assumption that the income tax credit was on the 1.8, not the 2.8. So I don't know if, if you knew that or not. Mr. Vance would like to speak. Yes. The first one you had was an error. The council clerk able to change the one part there okay. so and she has it corrected when it's with her today oh, okay great so then yeah. you want to pass those around great. excellent perfect and there's no sense of beating up on two different plans right. well, that was yeah. not our right. intention right yeah. i know ours was pretty straightforward and clear um, the information that came from mr uh, sturgis I think made it very, very clear and simple. It says place it on a ballot for 2015, and to raise the income tax by two tenths for five year, a five year period with one tenth, in, one tenth increase specifically dedicated for the purpose of street maintenance and repair and replacement. And the remaining one tenth should be payable to the general fund, provided the tax increase is passed in the general election ordinance and it's the ones that apply to the street lighting and the uh, income tax credit to repeal effective December 31st, 2015. I don't see that on this. Do we have a different... Because that was emailed out to everybody a couple of times, I believe. I guess I'm just looking at what I have in front of me that has this new by council and it's still... It's still 0.2% going to vehicle replacement, highway division for paving, and if it passes, the street lighting fee is repealed and income tax credit restored to 100% of the first one. Yes. Okay. But nothing to the general fund? It's designated for vehicle replacement for streets and highways. Okay. As I read that, that's specific then, correct? Well, that's the original. Well, I see three things mm -hmm. there. Yeah. What I was see sent over to your last meeting was what Perry had put together. And that's the part I, that I just read to you. I know that one out there, about language based on this. To me, this is specific. It's saying that it will only be utilized for repair and repaving programs. That to me is not the general operations of the department. Am I accurate in my thinking? Well, look, I'll show you what I mean. This is this is the first thing we received, and I think this is what you just read, correct? just hand is this which is the same document but it does not it, it does not include that okay and instead it's supposed includes, to include that and yes this is this is the only thing in the document now about that so are they backwards yes. this, this is incorrect yes it is incorrect so this is incorrect yes okay what it is 
He was, well. Yeah, so there's got to be some more legislation. Yeah. Um, we what have, we sent over a month ago was Perry's language. Well, but order. this is what has been passed now, okay. this is what we've got to work with. Um, bearing in mind what we just read here is that what this plan would be that we have in front of us would be to have an increase in the income tax to go just for city vehicle replacement and not for the police or fire for streets and highways and to provide funding for city streets repair paving program, not the people who would be doing it, just the materials, the repaving itself. Um, and if that levy passes, that's going just to streets and to, um, to the vehicle replacement for the streets and highways, they would want the income tax credit to go back on the first 100%, 100% of the 1.8% of income tax payable, which means we would be losing, um, going back to Laura's on page 9, um, about $540,000 from the general fund, which would uh, decrease that general fund greatly, which, again, we'd also have to put the 349, 437 back up on top. So we're actually, in essence, by that doing is, that, that is wrong, though. That is not. I know, but what we, we have to. We have a plan in front of us that we have to approve or reject. But that was not what was approved in the ordinance. This is well, we had a special this meeting. Is, That's not. This is what we have in this front is of incorrect. us. Well, then, why did you pass it? We passed what I read to you. It was an error by the court to include that. Okay, then this is what I'll do. Um, I would ask for a vote to approve or reject what we have in front of us. If we do reject it, we have to tell um, council why, and we have to tell uh, it has to be changed within 30 days. And I'll, I'll ask, um, I guess I'll make another point here. Mm -hmm. Right now, I have in front of me Resolution 1-2015, and it is in two different forms. That's the good question. That's exactly my question. Form. 1 20, resolution 1-2015, which you forwarded to all of us via email, has two income tax proposals okay. in it. And now, oh, finish, I see. Finish. It's the exact same resolution document. It's the exact same resolution number. Sa and now the one we just received today is a different resolution 1-2015. What are we voting on? What, which plan are we considering? We can't have, we can't have this. I mean, we need to have one plan as it was passed by council, not two of the exact same thing that are different in their word. So we, we did that. pass this one, Bob. I, I, it was a mistake made by our right. council clerk okay. in transferring right. so the, the The first one. The we, meeting that took Mr. Townsend presided over. Right. We passed the language specifically as I. Okay. What I and and, and, and I, I believe you. But the, the first one that was signed by the mayor and president of council, and I. Somebody else's signature must be on it too. The clerk is wrong. We know that's wrong because it has two different tax measures in it. The one you just handed to us is also wrong because it has the wrong tax language. So we still don't have a plan without two of something or without the wrong one. So we need the right one. We need it to have the correct language. I, I would just I'm say go back to your point. I think we have to vote on what was passed out just recently and said to us that this is the accurate statement. That's what and, and just and said this is accurate. Whether or not, I mean, right. if council chooses yeah. to use the same resolution number and just change what's on the resolution, I leave it up to council. 
but I have to take what was distributed in front of me. Um, so I would look for a motion to approve, to put it on the table to approve. So moved. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. So Bob G moves and Bob Y seconds. I will take a vote now. And I'll have the secretary um, take a roll call vote. And this would be to approve the plan that we have today in front of us. Great. Mary Kelly Kazero Perry? No. Tony Townsend? No. Elaine Campbell? No. Robert Gessner? No. Um, Robert Young? No. Dan Risco? No. Sharon Hanrahan? No. So, now what our charge is, is to <coughs> tell me, because I'll be writing on behalf of the commission, what you need from council. Can I take a stab at some of this at least? Let her rip. Okay. We need a different resolution, not the same resolution. We need a different resolution number passed. With all the signatures on it. Um, that succinct, succinctly details how much of an income tax will be on the ballot, when it will be on the ballot, and where, for what one and where, and where the monies are to go. Then we also need the ifs. So if this ballot passes, if this passes at the ballot, what else will transpire? So, I'm getting the idea that maybe, you know, if that, if an income tax increase of 0.2% passes, regardless of where it goes to, if that happens, then these things happen. And so I think the street lighting fee came up. Um, I heard something about the income tax credit. So, after council does that, um, and I will write this in the letter, council needs to contact Laura Brown so that she can put these in a forecast. Because that forecast will be part of the plan. Is there anything else I'm missing? <coughs> I guess that my only question would be, I guess it would be a point that I don't think what you just said restricts council or the city to bring back the exact same plan. That if they want to change the type of revenue generation, the extent, the, the permanency or temporal nature of the, the tax plan, they can, they can do anything they want in another plan. We're not restricting them to only a 0.2% income tax. I see what you're saying, Bob, and I don't believe we can at this point because we simply don't have the numbers to make a, a, a good uh, value judgment on that. Um, once we see the numbers, I think then we've got something that we can either approve or reject. Well, I'm just saying, but we're not restricting them to bringing back this plan with typographical errors correct. Well, this is a little bit more than typos, but well, I understand. Yeah, but, but if somebody, if if, it, if in two weeks somebody on council comes up with a new idea and everybody loves it, they can include it in the plan. Answer that will be yes. I, 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 
asking for yeah. it. That's what we're it asking is, for. Yes. It is yes. I'm now, just trying to make that sure that. At that point, yeah. when we get a solid plan that's got everything where we can actually make a good judgment on whether to approve it or reject it, it's yeah. quite possible that it yeah. might be rejected again, but for different reasons. Right. I, I just want to make sure that it's, that it's clear that, that the commission is not restricting council to one specific measure to increase. Email. At this at this measure. time, no. Okay. Now I think we've got to see the way the numbers are. Okay. Sure. Given that, yes. I would also just offer to council that if they want to talk about proposed ideas, or if they say this is you know we had this plan, this is what we're for, and they want to send that to me before they vote and have me put the numbers together and send it back before the vote, I'm more than willing to do that. Please give me a, you know, several days to turn that around for you if it's significantly different. But you know, if you want me to take certain things out, put back in, I'm more than willing to do that um, if you send me a request. Yes, Mr. Nancy. Yeah, to Bob's point there. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want us to clear up the language on what we are proposing to you. Voted on it as it came to you right now. Okay, right. but we have already had some conversation about conversation about improving the bond, and that's oh, okay. to that point we have discussed that. Yeah. Maybe there are some things. Maybe we can get another hundred thousand here or something like that. Okay. We have to discuss yeah. that. So. Okay. I just didn't want you to feel you no, were restricted. No, we don't. We to that, so okay. don't want to do it just that way. Okay. We do want to talk about some of those other things. Um, this is not defense, but we had to get it done quick. And uh, uh, I guess we messed up here a little bit on how we handled the paperwork. But uh, Mr. Sturgis's original letter on this is what, where, what our intention was. Okay. And we will do a better job. Okay. So with that, yes. Does the 30-day clock start today, or when I, I don't think it's out? fair to do that. Um, when and I'll, I'll send the email to Tony. The I'll send the letter via email to Tony, and it'll be up to Tony to distribute to our council members. There are some here, but I don't think it's fair of me to have the entire council um, go about changing it when they've not had the benefit of being here and listening to the discussion. I think I at least owe them that. So, and not to hold your feet to the fire. Tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so by, Tomorrow so the 30 day clock will be, I think it's sometime around May 10? Yeah, I was kind of hoping towards a uh, meeting on May 12th, it's Tuesday. Um, that way it give us some time to look at it. I, I think basically now we know what we'd be looking for, um, and then also we'd be know, we'd know if there are any nuances or changes that we might see, um, but we just need a direct path. Michelle, I will be around for a while. Okay. Okay, sure. sure. Aware, if you don't mind. Yes. Um, I did want to bring up to the commission, and I'm not sure how you'll feel about this, but last evening um, there were some raises given in our Parks and Rec Department, and so I just wanted to make sure the commission was aware of that. Okay. Well, there's, um, I was going to say screws up, that's not a very diplomatic. That, <laughs> well, that changes, <laughs> that changes your assumptions. Is there any other raises we should know about? General no, they the are. Okay. employees are not. Okay. They're not in the general fund, but, but I felt that it was pretty good to make you aware of it. Okay. Um, that's right. It's licenses. I've seen that. Okay. Um, I don't think I've ever used to this. Sharon and I will not be here on the 12th. No. Um, I really want to be here. Can he, could he be, can, no. can I join electronically? No. No sunshine laws, boy, let me tell you. Um, Going when from that's the, okay uh, 11 through the 18th. 
that'll give them more than 30 days, but I'd, I'd like to have it within 30 yes. days, yes. Yes. seriously, because that's the law, yep. and then that will give the commission members, um, as soon as I get it, I will distribute it to commission mm -hmm. members yeah. so they have the opportunity to review it. Yeah. But just because we're not meeting until the 19th doesn't mean anything changes as far as any 15% cuts or anything. We're just doing this on, would you like to check? Up. Thank you. Um, so, will the 19th be a regular meeting or a special meeting? Um, I think a regular meeting prob or probably. We don't have a regular meeting this month. Right. So we will not have seen, we haven't seen the March figures yet, unless we're going to meet later in April, which I assume we're not. So we'll need to see both March and April numbers on the 19th. As soon as I get all the information from March, I'll send it out sure. via email, and then we can <laughs> okay. yeah, I just anything. didn't want it to be restricted yeah. to a special meeting and only cover yeah, one thing. Okay. okay. Yeah. The other, the, the, maybe a third point, because last time we met, we, we were basically saying, do we, do we really see a revision in the plan? If I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, the revision I see from what we looked at the last time we met was that where the money would be designated. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's that's really the only revision from what we it sounds couldn't like vote to on. Me. It yeah. sounds like we couldn't me. vote on it the last time, but we said, you know, we don't see that this is really a revision. So now the revision that I see is that's the only part of it that is really a revision. Correct? Am I correct instead? Street lighting fee is different. Like well, yes, they go yeah. that goes away. But that <laughs> wasn't that, that going that was away before. You're right. You're right. I think you're right. So it's basically saying the increase is designated. That's the revision from the plan we passed, yeah. and it failed because of the levy. Yeah. So I, you know, I'm just saying, you know, the council should not be restricted. You know, we're really looking for a revision, and um, the only revision I see now is that the increase would go specifically to two areas. That being the revision. Yes. And that's all. At this point, yes. Okay. So I think it's a good point to say to council they're not restricted to look at a revision. I would agree. Larry, good news? There's no one here for another five minutes to ask. It's all locked up there. Oh, out of the office. What's that? They're out of the office till two thirty. Well, can you we can, make the assumption. can we tentatively yeah. and then it Larry yes. if you would let me know if that's a go or no. And then uh, we'll look for but we have a, the basement over here. I think that's yeah. true too. Yeah. That's just kind of amazing. Yeah. Is it here or yeah. across the street? Hopefully here, but if not, then I'll, I'll let you know where, where it is. Yes, Tom. Sorry. I have a question. Uh, yes. Could the city council read a man resolution number one? Because you had stated that they would have to create a different resolution or a different number, so that would be resolution number two. It would be like amended resolution, though. I mean, I just saw resolution one and resolution the same resolution number, but different contents. Okay, so we can and, and keep that's what I, Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, that is, because, yeah, it just is. So, so we can keep resolution number one, but what amendments? We want to go to two, isn't that what you said? I would rather just so that we don't get yes. the whole thing about oh, this is one two zero you one turn five down one. here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I would just assume we just do another resolution. Because I guess my concern is that resolution one goes on the books in thirty days. So could you not have another resolution yeah. to repeal? One, yes, two, 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 I guess I'm just a little confused because resolution number one will go into effect in the and I would 30 it. days. Yeah, I would repeal it. Yeah. Okay. 
All right. Um, we set the meeting date. Yep. May 19th. I would look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Elaine moves. Bob Young seconds. On a voice vote, all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.